it's early morning at Jaguar Land Rover Waterford, the dealership over here. But we're here for a reason, and that is if you look around and you'll see a lot, a lot of beautiful Jags because we were the Jag Club. We're going on a breakfast run with the Jag Club today. And there's some really, really special and spectacular cars over here. Look at that, that E-type fixed head coupe. Just says it all. He has, of course, a convertible. Just a full range of all, many, many of the cars. Going to take a drive, have a breakfast run, and just experience it all. Well, now I'm wandering into the J section. And you can see E paces, F paces, all over the place. And let's have a look here. Of course, F pace over here. But you'll notice this, of course, is the SVR. I thought it had to be. You could just see it had to be. And of course, it's a bit of a mouth-watering price over there as well. But they really are something else. But today's not about these ones, really. It's way, way more about some of those ones parked outside let's see if we can just catch a view of the ones outside because that's where it really counts is some of the older ones that are parked across there we'll be cruising out in those shortly inside the dealership of course some of the new car uh, new Range Rover Sports Defender 90 in front there now you'll know and see soon of course my video on the 90 but this is the v8 one i only got the 3 liter 6 but i'm not going to complain too much but just wait a moment because that's not what all of what's in the dealership we'll see in a second i'm with bob brown he's the current vice chairman of the jaguar club northern region because we are looking at certain very very special cars bob give us a quick one on this unbelievable E-type, of course. Okay. Yep, obviously an E-type from the uh, 60s into the 70s. This is actually a Series 3. There was three series uh, finishing off into the uh, mid-70s. This is the V12 uh, Roadster. And by Roadster, we mean it's got a convertible roof. Right. So it's not a coupe. Uh, as you can see, it's British Racing Green, which is a very popular color. And it's got beautiful wire wheels and an automatic gearbox. Uh, very desirable car these days sought after all over the world and as Enzo Ferrari once called it the most beautiful car ever made I think it's been voted that a few times it has okay it has. stunning cars I mean these are unbelievable and in my book I know the purists I always have to make this comment purists will say the convertible or the drop head is not the best I love convertibles yeah. I'll never change yeah it's a matter of personal taste and if we all like the same things life will be a very boring place so yeah I like it and uh it is iconic. Absolutely. Right. Bob, we've looked at the E-Type. We've looked at the F-Type, which came later. But in between the two of them came this. Yes. Um, when this car was launched um, as a spiritual successor to the, uh, the E-Type and then the XJS in between, uh, people said, well, it's a Grand Tour. It's not a sports car. And that is right. exactly what it is. It is a GT car. It's not a sports car. So the F-Type did replace the e-type as a sports car to sports car this gt car i've got one myself is a wonderful piece of equipment came out with a 4.2 v8 which was then later upgraded to a 5 liter v8 and it's just a fantastic car whether you're doing the daily school run or out on the open roads into Mpumalanga or down to cape town uh, as you can see it is a 2 plus 2 seating arrangement this is the coupe uh, and this is actually a special edition called portfolio so it's got improved uh, braking on the calipers, uh, slight uh, trim details are different, and uh, just something that the marketing people came up with to uh, to distinguish it from the other standard XKs. Okay, but now let's just swing straight across, because he has the XK again. Yes, this is a slightly earlier version. This is the 4.2 liter engine that I mentioned, also a V8 with a supercharged, probably kicks out about 450 brake horsepower. Well, look at that where. I love this. The bonnet scoop that says supercharged yes. on the scoop. Yes, if you if you're <laughs> going to advertise, if you're gonna advertise, then advertise. Don't, yeah. uh, don't hide it. But as you can see, this is a beautiful gold color. The interior is a mushroom brown color. I've got the same interior on mine. And this is a convertible 
fully automatic it takes about 15 seconds for the roof to be fully retracted away and yeah great value for money car gt car and there's enough space to fit the golf clubs and go away for a weekend with this well the golf clubs are crucial of course absolutely aren't they? yes yes 100 percent. and i know this one i have experienced uh in fact i think this very car beautiful what a cruiser that's for sure yeah In the years following the E-Type and the incredible success, the world waited for JAG to bring out a true successor to the E-Type. The XJS didn't quite cut it to many people and in many people's books. So they brought out in 1998 the XK. This is an XKR. V8, 4.2 litre, petrol engine. It pumps out the power, but it's not about the power. It's about the looks. It's about the shape. Coupe. Or convertible doesn't matter which you got them in both body styles and you can just see the sleek incredible shape to this car just it just speaks power it speaks performance it speaks cruising in the most beautiful stunning manner that you can imagine a cruiser on the open road with that top down low 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 mean front end over here with a jag badge right down at the bottom over there but it just speaks of leaf power athleticism of course in other words it speaks of jaguar and that's what this car really is and this was the next step in the process to of course the f-type that came after it but this one i would say was e-type e-type one and a half Okay, Bob, we're now moving to probably the latest in the range. Yes, this is a uh, car that's probably three years of age. It is the uh, spiritual successor to the E-Type. This is the F-Type. And this particular one is the top of the range SBR, which is the special vehicle racing model for Jaguar, the equivalent of AMG for Mercedes and uh, BMW Empower. So right. It's a supercharged V8 engine. Uh, it goes well over the speed limit. And, uh, <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. No, but obviously under the right circumstances on the track, that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, it is a beast of a car. It growls, it makes the right noises, kicks you up the bum when you need to. And it really is uh, the peak of technology in terms of internal combustion engines from Jaguar. It's probably the last of the V8s that Jaguar will make and put out there. As, as most people know, the car manufacturers are moving to EVs and hybrids. Absolutely, and uh, this is going to be missed. I mean, I've got to just show you. Look at these massive, massive yellow calipers over there as well. Because you've got to have the stopping power to match the going power. Absolutely, yes. There's no point uh, having the, the power if you can't stop in time. Fantastic. Moving on to the sedans now. And, of course, the classic, classic Jag sedan XJ6. Bob. Yes, this is a model that's been around for a long, long time. Uh, up until recently, it was the mainstay for Jaguar, the saloon car, the four-door uh, car that the British Prime Ministers were always seen in. Uh, British gangsters used to drive because it was fast and almost <laughs> bulletproof. Uh, and it's a great value for money car today. They're not worth a great deal. This is a 1976 model, Series 2, uh, inline six-cylinder engine. And it's for sale at the moment for 135,000. And as long as you're not worried too worried much about the fuel bills or you know not to 100 time, this is a great car to buy and will last for a long, long time. And the interesting thing about this one is if, if you know the fuel price is about to increase, you've got the twin tanks. So you can fill up <laughs> before a price increase. Yes. One of the things that Jaguar were famous for is they do have twin tanks on these and there's a switch on the dashboard where you can switch between the two. Uh, the reason why you need twin tanks, I'll leave that to your imagination. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, uh, you, you mentioned just now British Leyland and the height of British Leyland. The, I'm not sure, I'm sure you do know this fact, that some of these were actually assembled in Blackheath in Cape Town. That's right, they were. There was, I think, the only factory outside of the UK at the time manufacturing Jaguars or assembling Jaguars was in Blackheath and in Cape Town. Uh, I'm not sure when that factory closed, probably in the 80s, but... Uh, Yes, it's the only one in the world outside of uh, outside of the UK. I actually visited there as a schoolboy and saw some of these coming off the production line. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, that wonderful. was probably Series 1s even, but I do remember that. Yeah. 
This is a Jaguar's answer to the BMW 3 Series or the C-Class Mercedes. It is uh, named as the XE. This is a sports model. I think it's got a 3-litre V6 petrol engine in it. Uh, great car, great value for money, although not as cheap perhaps as the, as the BMWs, but still you get a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, as you can see, color coordinated silver uh, and the black. Um, yeah, look, the, uh, the thing about this one, Bob, is, as you say, fighting the 3 Series, C-Class, Mercs, etc. Originally, and I have tested a few of these, they were actually good value for money in the sense they came fully spec for the price. Yes. Not as some of your other opposition do. Yes. But mid-size saloon or sedan, that's not exactly the most popular car or style anyway in the market these days. But it's still a Jag. That's yes. the difference. Yes. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Bob, this one is pretty special, isn't it? Yes. Uh, returning back to where we started with the, with the E-Type, the iconic E-Type. This is a 1964. Series 1, as you can see, a beautiful cherry red color with a mustard interior. Uh, this is also quite special because it's a manual gearbox as opposed to the automatics. Um, the car that really put Jaguar on the map when it was launched in 1961, the E-Type was something that blew the opposition away. And uh, the, the cars that were available out of the UK at the time were, were nothing compared to this. And this just, just took Jaguar to the iconic status that it holds today absolutely and this is a inline six cylinder it is it's a six cylinder engine the famous six cylinder engine the jaguar have had probably in operation in one way shape or form or another for the last 50 years uh, very reliable and gives you performance but reliability so Absol absolutely 100 percent, and that incredible shape yes and we'll end on that point so for motor matters behind the camera again I'm Eleanor, I'll see you next time.